So for the past month, I've actually started to look for a job and it's gone something like this. So I just got rejected from Chewy. Hello Pooja, thank you for your interest in joining the Target team. We wanted to let you know, however, that the hiring team has not selected you for further consideration for this role. So again, I got another rejection. Hi Pooja, thank you for your application to All Trails. We've made the difficult decision to pursue other applicants whom we believe to be a more close match. I know I set that up kind of for a sad video, but I didn't want this to be sad. Despite me getting a lot of rejections, I think it's actually opened up my mind to just failing more. I've made videos about this in the past where I've interviewed at a bunch of tech companies and I've failed over 30 interviews. And at first it honestly sucked. Like it really does suck to get rejected at something that you think that you're capable of, but then obviously the person that you're interviewing with, they don't think you're capable of getting that job or whatever the reason is, it just sucks in the moment. But the more that I've started applying and getting rejected, I'm getting back into that mindset of, I don't really have anything to lose at this point and I just wanna keep going. I think, I don't know where this positivity is coming from, but I think it's from me also wanting to move forward from my current job, which I'll make another video about that another time. But as soon as I thought about the possibility of leaving this job and doing something new, even if that means taking a few months off, um, taking a break from the tech industry, which I kind of need right now, I'm reaching the point of burnout. I, I hope that things will work out for the best. Like I have to believe that, you know? Hello, I am back. So yeah, before we were abruptly interrupted, I just wanted to kind of go through my process. So I'm probably going to start hitting the grind soon in terms of interviewing, or at least if I can get an interview. Um, but what I've noticed is I've actually reached out to a bunch of friends that work at specific companies that I might like to work at. And I've actually gotten recruiter callbacks through that avenue rather than just you know applying online because I feel like everyone applies online and no one ever gets the job. Pro tip, I heard about this before the market was bad, but apparently when you apply online, that's typically just a legality for the company. So for example, if they have a role that they wanna fill, usually they look at internal hires first, but it's illegal to not put that job up publicly first. So they'll put the job up publicly. Of course, they'll still look at candidates externally. Um, you can't just hire internally if there's not enough people. Uh, but at the same time, it's a lot harder to get hired that way. So the best piece of advice that I can partake in giving you is to have friends at companies that you want to work at. And of course, that's easier said than done. If you don't have friends at these companies, I would just reach out like crazy on LinkedIn or, you know, email. I've done that as well. And yeah, just set up a coffee chat and then they're probably more than willing to give you of recruiters email or hiring managers email or like even just another software engineers email that you can start the conversation with and build a relationship with. I think that's so important because we tend to forget that these companies are getting thousands of applications. And despite there being an ATS system, it's still really hard to filter for candidate competency just looking at a resume of skills. You know what I mean? Like it is pretty easy to just fill up your resume with any sort of skill that you want to. Um, even in my videos, I've talked about how if you spend more time working on specific skills that are required in the job or like those nice to haves, um, you can stand out better with the ATS system. But again, they're probably also looking for experienced candidates who have those soft skills where they can take on a leadership role or they can converse with other software engineers or they can you know, like talk to their manager and resolve conflict and, and do things like that, which again, you can't really see that in a resume. And, and software engineering is so much more than just the technical aspects. I don't know why I'm going on a rant right now, but anyways, I wanted to talk about my like process um, and how I get prepared for this sort of thing. So I have like a few interviews lined up despite getting auto rejected from a lot of companies. Um, so my plan, because I'm still in the early stages, is to first start studying and brush up on things that I don't know. So I'm a mid-level to senior level engineer, at least that's what 
um, recruiters have been telling me when I talk to them based on my years of experience and just like the type of experiences that I've had. Um, so that means that the interview process is starting to look a little bit different than what I'm used to. Originally with junior and mid-level engineers, they're typically looking for people with really strong coding skills. Um, and that's not to say that like higher level, senior level, principal level um, is, are not supposed to have coding skills. Of course, they're supposed to have strong coding skills, but the emphasis of the interview is not really um, on those coding skills as much because they assume that since you have a role as a mid-level engineer, or you've had all that experience, that the standard is there, um, that you have those skills already. So what they're usually looking for is the leadership and soft skills. Sorry, my camera died. I actually had to get a new memory card for this camera, but I was going on a bit of a tangent anyways. I actually wanted to transition into my process while looking for a job. I've kind of just started, but my plan is to create a spreadsheet and don't judge me, I'm using numbers, not Excel. Um, and this is probably what it's gonna look like. Uh, I don't have a lot of stuff on here yet because again, I'm just starting out, but I've just written down a few companies that I'd really like to work for. And then I'm talking about like different stages of the process. So am I already in touch with the rec recruiter? Yes or no. Have I already scheduled something for the first round interview? And then also which role I'm applying to. And then maybe just a few notes on my interview prep for that role. So I plan to fill this sheet up eventually with, with more companies because I know it's gonna take more than just like eight companies of interviewing at before I actually get a job. Um, but I think it'll just help me keep my notes and my thoughts a little bit more organized. And yeah, the other thing I'm doing obviously is going through leak code and just doing as many questions as possible. But even in that sense, so if you look at numbers, uh, you know, I have like Target and Home Depot and Meta and Google and all that stuff. Um, leak code does have specific questions for like larger companies like you can see already meta and google they have thousands of questions and so like if you click on meta um, i'll probably end up creating a study plan and then also you can filter by like when the cer when certain questions were asked within a certain amount of time so in the past 30 days for example these were the most recent questions so i'm just going to go through all of these questions as well I just set up my new account, so don't judge me. I only have two out of 167 solved so far, but it's because I just set up this account. Um, I got the premium study plan. I actually canceled all my uh, Elite Code subscriptions before and I, I set up this new account. So I don't know why I'm making excuses. I'm, I think I'm just embarrassed that I have only two questions on the study plan done. But yeah, that's kind of um, like a couple of steps that I'm thinking of. Just getting every all my thoughts down on paper, um, as to like which companies I'm going to apply for, which stages of the process I'm in, and then actually like grinding lead code questions. I know some of those like large Forbes 500 companies, they don't put a lot of emphasis on just like straight up lead coding your way through the interview process. But at the same time, I think a lot of this process will overlap between big tech and like just, you know, big company. Um, just because uh, you have to, do some coding right in the interviews. So I think this will at least brush up my skills there. Uh, and then I've also heard like a couple of my friends now have recommended Hello Interview, which let me just go to their website. Yeah, so I'll probably get a subscription to Hello Interview. Basically this is for mock interviews and then also the system design aspect. So kind of like I mentioned earlier, because I'm more like mid to pushing senior level, actually I'm kind of already senior level, um, I'll definitely have to practice system design and I think they'll go way more in depth with details on the system design aspect. So I really want to make sure that I'm prepared for that part because in the past, like system design has been part of the interview process, but it's been a very small part of it. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah. I mean, I haven't tried it yet, but it's kind of expensive too, but two of my friends have recommended it. So I'm definitely, and they both got into other big tech companies recently. So yeah, I'll definitely check it out. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to start out doing. I won't reach out to more recruiters just yet because I want to start to get ready. I also have already kind of updated my resume. Um, so I think we're good there. I probably don't have to do anything else there. 
Um, but I'll get feedback. I think I'll get some feedback from my friends who work at these companies just so I know like, okay, am I putting the right things down? And I'm gonna also take my own advice that I've said in other videos before where I'll look at the job requirements and nice to haves and I'll maybe tweak my resume, not putting things that aren't true, but maybe for example, if I have 10 experiences and I can only fit five on there, I'll choose the five most relevant experiences to that specific role. That's usually what I end up doing. Now that I have almost actually seven years of experience, which is so crazy. Um, yeah, it's, it's wild to me. I feel like I just started in this industry, but yeah. So I think that's it for episode one. If people want to see more of my job hunting process, I think I'll just continue to post videos, kind of like little video journals. Um, just kind of outlining my progress, like my failures, if I end up succeeding and getting a job that I want. But I think it's really good to just put this out there because I'm sure other people can relate. The market's pretty tough right now. It's not easy to get a job, especially if you don't have experience. So yeah, let me know in the comments if this is more of what you want to see. I'll probably still do more like informational type videos and career advice as well. But I think it's also good to show the raw aspects of the struggle, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I thought, you know, let me just try a different format and see how it goes. So let me know guys and yeah, see you later.